coming up next, we get to this UFC middleweight division fight. Well, he may not have the gold at home to prove it, but many believe on any given Saturday night, you are looking live at the best middleweight on this roster, the Brazilian Paulo Costa, the artist formerly known as Bo Hashinha, but man, has he been erasing UFC competition left and right. His fight against Yoel Romero will be one that they are talking about deep into the next century. This man is the total package, and tonight looks to inch one step closer to future UFC Golden Globe. So here he is, one of the more prolific takedown artists in the UFC at present. And when you get some praise from Daniel Cormier, when it comes to your offensive takedown game, you know you're doing something right. And we talk about wrestlers and judo players and grapplers, but this guy just combines all of that. He is able to use foot sweeps from the grappling game. He is able to use throws from judo, and he's able to use wrestling in the, from the wrestling game to take people down. He has an array of takedowns at his disposal, and he uses every single one of them from the speed of the level change to the timing to the knowledge of where to go next when the guy starts to defend, he's truly, truly something special. I don't think he could take you down, but tonight he doesn't have to. So he does not in have this to. matchup, prevailing wisdom is he'll be able to get this fight to the canvas. Our tale of the tape for this middleweight fight. Three years apart with similar height and some differences in reach. All right, now for the introductions, we go to Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a kickboxer holding a professional record of 14 wins, two losses. He stands six feet, one inch tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Paolo, the eraser, Costa! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 12 wins, no losses. He stands 62 inches tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Fighting out of Stockholm, Sweden, Hobbs at Bosch Chibaya! And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the Octagon, Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata, your referee. Are you ready? All right, so here we go with the start of round one. I can tell how excited you are for this matchup. Seems to be a striking advantage on one side, but maybe this is a big time fight. It feels like a big moment for both of these guys' careers. Who is going to be able to implement their game plan the best in this matchup between these two big time athletes? Good punch, Lance. He's sort of hanging out here unguarded, DC. Not sure if he's trying to bait him in or what, but not great body language here. Back to his feet. Oh, straight right. Combination lands for him. He is really putting his strikes together tonight. I mean, he's feeling himself tonight, John. He's doing a great job of putting everything together. Might be a submission attempt here, champ. I mean, you cannot sit in a full guard. When you sit in the full guard, you give these guys so many opportunities. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Back to the feet now. Midway through round one. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Oh, nice job to get back up again. You don't want to hang out on the ground with this guy. Big elbow there, Lance. Oh, a huge strike lands there, DC. He landed that massive shot. Now he needs to try to find the next shot, the follow-up shot, that will finish the fight. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent, you got to be careful playing around for... Right now, it looks like he may be trying to set up an arm triangle choke. He needs to secure the left arm 
push it across and secure it with his head. Watch triangle, watch triangle. Nicely done. Oh, big combination of ground and pound strikes here, DC. This could be the beginning of the end. I mean, you gotta be very careful when you take these big ground and pound strikes. You need a controlled posture on the bottom. And if you're the top guy, the guy that's looking to finish, continue to gain posture and rain down big strikes in your opponent. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Now look at him jumping in to try to get the finish. So we cross the 30-second mark in our opening round. 20 seconds left. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. Final seconds of round one. All oh, the ground and pound strikes continue to rain down. The opponent better move out of harm's way or the referee's gonna stop this. He better start to move, and when his opponent starts to posture, he needs to put his feet on the hip, push him away to try to escape this very, very dangerous position. All right, a lot of tremendous striking action in that last round, DC. I know you don't have a telestrator, but take us through the replay. I mean, I would love to have my telestrator right now. That was a great display of high-level mixed martial arts striking. Both combatants stood toe-to-toe -to -toe and let it all hang out. Strong defense here as the hook to the head is blocked. Good stick. Oh, he's got it going tonight. Beautiful combination of strikes there by Costa. What a body kick. Looked like he clipped him with a left hand counter there. The right hand just misses. All right, so he's landed some good shots tonight, but this is not a combo meal, right? No three piece, no soda. It's one and done more often than not. John, don't you come to me without a combo. I want the whole platter. Give him the whole platter, young man. Put some punches together. Make this guy take the whole thing. Give him more than one strike. You have now found a set of punch. The jab is landing consistently. Find something that's gonna go behind it. Big ball punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Oh, big knee to the body. That'll soften him up. That oh, knee. big knee. That knee hurt him. His opponent's really on the ropes. His opponent's on Beach Street. He's hurt so bad. I don't know what he's gonna do to stay in this fight. Takedown defense holds up. So a much different approach from him here in round two. Took him a while to find the range, get in his striking rhythm. He has found it here, and as a result, has really picked up the pace in round two. You gotta check these low leg kicks. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? And they separate. Just out of range with the big right hand. Oh, back of the straight punches we've seen all night. Huge straight punch lands, and he's got him hurt very bad. So, oh, late defense on the takedown and scrambles to his feet. Nicely done. Man, isn't it fun to watch this dude work on the mat? He's unbelievable how fluid he is in his motions on the mat. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You now don't he has see a headlock trying right to pin his opponent's back down flat onto the mat. Look for him to transition to an arm triangle to try to chase the finish. Last triangle, last triangle. There he is, he's moving to the finishing position. Now watch, he goes parallel, right? And he's out. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. And the horn sounds on round two. All right, so there's the end of the round, and the tide has officially turned a huge head strike to stun his opponent. We'll see which corner can adjust here moving forward.
I mean, they've got to be celebrating. They've got to be happy. Everything's working. But the other side has to be concerned. They have to figure something out, make some sort of adjustment to try to change the tide of this fight. center line, slips to avoid the right hand. Nice straight punch. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on them. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's going to start looking to land big shots from the top. Now the guy's got armbar. He's attacking it on him. You gotta recognize that when a guy starts to put his feet on your hips, you gotta move him off, and you gotta cover. You can't be off to an angle. Oh, and there's the tap, so he submits him with the arm ball. How about that? Great job, great performance. Yeah, that is some high-level Brazilian jiu-jitsu right there. Just the way he transitioned to secure the arm up against his body and ultimately forced the tap. High-level stuff out of that young man here tonight. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He does a great job of staying patient. He doesn't rush or panic. You are never safe when you're fighting this guy. You're in a lot of trouble. You're in a lot of trouble the entire time when you're this good in the submission. So there he is, your winner by submission. That is a finish they will likely be talking about for some time. Big win, major statement made to the rest of this division. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Rivellano is going to stop this contest at two minutes, 18 seconds of round number three. Declaring the winner by tap out, Hobbs and Bors what an incredible result here tonight as you see the winner there celebrating his victory by way of submission and they put so much stock into finishing this fight they felt like to really spin his career forward they needed to not just win but get the finish and they certainly got it tonight they got the finish he's such a terrific grappler every time he's on his back he looks for submissions over and over again eventually he found one tonight and got the desired result